in general, the biggest culprit these days is really sleep apnea, okay? The main thing is, unfortunately, the fact that America is getting bigger is a, <laughs> is a big contributing factor to this problem. Because I tell people, not only do we gain weight down in our tummy area, but we actually gain in the face. And when you gain in the face, what happens, it really crowds the airway. When it crowds the airway, it makes us more prone to having these episodes of where we call, we basically obstruct our sleep at nighttime. And the problem is the more prevalent society is with, with our weight going up, unfortunately this contributes to, uh, to a higher degree of sleep apnea. The sleep apnea usually is classified into three different levels, mild and moderate and severe, like almost most of diseases. That, that this classification is based on a number we call it the apnea hypopnea index. It's a number is calculated from the sleep study we talked about earlier. And if the number is less than five times an hour, then the patient is not really considered to have a sleep apnea, they have only snoring and, or borderline you know, disease. Between five and 15, the number will classify as mild, between 15 and 30 is moderate, and above 30 is severe. Sometimes if really, really high, we consider it very severe, which we try to treat them kind of quite urgently. And I always tell people in general, there are about three or four different options. You know, the one of the ones I'm sure everybody knows about is the mass, okay? And the premise for the mass are is that, uh, you know, they help provide constant pressure to keep the airway open when technically it's collapsing at nighttime. And there are different masks. They go masks that go in your nose, on your nose, that masks that cover your nose and mouth, and masks that cover your whole head. So they're all variable. It's a matter of like, I always tell people like Goldilocks and Three Bears, you're trying to find what's just right for you. Because what's right for you is not what's right for me, and it's not what's right for, uh, for anyone else. Um, the other one would be to wear a oral appliance. It's basically a mouthpiece. And unlike the mouthpiece that people who uh, play sports, because I'm sure that's the only mouthpiece most people know of, is that they make sure they have teeth at, in their 20s and 30s, but this one actually has like a hinge mechanism and it actually helps pull the lower jaw forward. And by doing so, it helps kind of pull the lower jaw and the tongue away from the back of the throat so it doesn't obstruct the airway. And that's an option, but you have to see the dentist for that, okay? The last option uh, really would be to do some surgery in the back of the throat. And Surgery as a whole will help open up the area. For some people who have very, very large tonsils, it makes a difference. For kids as a whole, basically, doing a tonsillectomy is considered the number one treatment option for children. The danger of untreat or not treating sleep disorder, especially you know, sleep apnea, for example, are many things, uh, including um, increase in blood pressure gradually over the year, including the blood sugar, or making glucose intolerance much worse making diabetes worse, um, and impair the heart function. All these things have been proven in many clinical trials over the last decade. Um, and there is clear association and correlation between increased incidence of um, atrial arrhythmia, especially atrial fibrillation, for example, and sleep apnea, especially when it's untreated, worsening you know, congestive heart failure, worsening blood pressure, so all these things can go get worse if sleep apnea get undiagnosed, for example. Um, more importantly, in my opinion, actually, is the daytime fatigue and sleepiness will this patient eventually will develop and how that can be associated with work-related accident or motor vehicle accidents um, and, um, and even per, uh, personal relationship problems.